Hello everyone. Welcome to Tech Geeks tutorial. Today we are going to talk about a contract first way of creating microservices using Spring Webflux. So let's get started. So there are definitely advantages of creating microservices using contract first way and the main reason behind this is to uh, create a contract beforehand so that you know the server side and the client side can go there go with their implementation simultaneously having said that so a few weeks back we wrote an article in medium which explains the, the steps um, to follow to create the service um, using a contact first way where you create the swagger yaml um, at the first and then go ahead with the implementation after that so it explains all the steps one by one and at the very bottom you would see um, uh, the link of a github repository for a sample code so if you open this so this tutorial is basically going through that uh, repository and having a hands-on demo how that actually looks like in real life so i have already cloned the uh, repository into my IntelliJ and I'll just start with this Swagger YAML so definitely I'm not going to talk about the integrities of Swagger YAML um, I'm, I'm anticipating every, everyone is uh, aware of this so for this particular uh, YAML we have exposed two endpoints um, one is get another is post with the same um, uh, slash pet um, URL so definitely the gate endpoint would be uh, giving you the details about all the pets and post is basically adding a pet into the repository very straightforward just to demonstrate how things works now from this YAML so this is the starting point of any of our service development and this YAML has to be handcrafted um, using you know uh, online server UI tool or any any other tool that you might um, use and this particular YAML becomes your contract between the service and the client once this YAML is ready you basically go to form.xml and I'm just showing you the major part of it so this plugin is basically take care of uh, creating the server side of the implementation from that Swagger YAML. You see that we have specified the Swagger YAML's path, and there are a few parameters to you know uh, specify. Uh, primarily, you need to mention the API package. So, in the Swagger YAML, there are two major components. One is the model part, um, and from from the model part it basically creates the model pojo classes out of the schemas and then uh, for the api specification it will also create um, the contract in the implementation side so if you go ahead and you know execute the maven clean package comment and it will create the classes for you to begin with now in the target folder generated sources open api you see the specified uh, under the specified package um, the model classes are created at the same time the pet api is also created now if you see this this is basically an interface and and uh, based on the swagger yaml both the endpoints like the get uh, pet and the post pet um, are also so this is the get one and this is the post one are added uh, as part of this interface now um, as part of the maven plugin it will also add uh, this particular source into the source root so it will be packaged in, into the jar file as well so once this interface is created mostly the boilerplate codes are already um, written now it's up to the implementation side which is the controller side 
to simply implement that interface and um, you know add the implementation on top of it so right now for the sake of you know demonstrating this i have kept it as an empty but uh, in real life you would add more implementation into this so you may call some service implementation service service classes and all that thing um so that's the primary um you know objective of this um maven plugin to create an interface and then use it in the controller so that will reduce a lot of boilerplate codes now once we have this worker yaml to start with and and uh, our intention is always to expose that further ui so that you know we can give it to the clients or you know for um, uh, developer testing also we need server ui to uh, expose so for that we need a couple of configurations to make one is uh, having a configuration class um, we should simply expose um, a spring doc configuration and spring doc config properties which we are using as default ones uh, but yeah if you need more customization definitely you can do it but you know most of the cases um, the default implementation would suffice or uh, need once you have that um, make sure that in your form xml you have um, the other dependencies as well so that the swagger ui uh, is rendered into uh, the browser and also in the application yaml make sure that these configurations are added so that um, it will not create the swagger ui on top of the implemented classes it will take it from the um, already existing swagger yaml file once we have this in place you simply run the application and um, so right now the server port is 8080 so the server service is coming up it's starting started with the 8080 port now you simply go to your local host and now you can see the uh, server ui definitely you can go ahead and test the ui uh, the services from here so the schemas and the services are visible in the ui so that's it for this particular tutorial hope you liked it if you um, like it then please share and subscribe to my channel thank you so much